All right, welcome one and all. Whoever may be watching this, this will be part seven of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Let's go. So it is now day two. Let's talk to this poor lass. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, of course. It's going to be the market, I'm assuming. Oh, I thought she must have, like, fallen over and spilt her luggage or something. Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm. What a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Okay, so I'm assuming we're going to have to find the right person to talk to. I do remember that the woods should be clear now. I think the guys were only going to be there for a day. No one's in here? Okay. So, I want to go check that out quickly, and then we need to go talk to Mr. Bryden, I guess. Good morning, Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. I wonder who left me this journal then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. Writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Did the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turn me stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I had a splendid time last night. Aye. I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. Goodbye. Tara. Okay, so then I guess that's what the um, the pathway will lead us to the lady. That's what I'm trying to get out. Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time, but we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you. Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. Hmm. 
Yep, ta-da, there we are. Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman, I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. How's your sightseeing going then? I... Save your words, young lady. I know you're no sightseer. And I know exactly why you're in Bewley. You won't get far by lying to me again. I'm sorry, I... I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. You knew my father? Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man, William. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. Twenty-five years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bride and excavate Hobbs Barrow. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Folks from all around come to me for help with their ailments. Hernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother was with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognise your own father's handwriting. It's been so many years since I've seen it. What do you make of this stone? I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket, or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. Binding magic? He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again. But I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel Bryden hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you'd best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him. 
as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his, let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Miss Walker. All right, I just wanted to make sure we got all the information from her. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed. No good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. This could have been me at one point in time. I did a degree in natural medicine. I could get on board with living out in the woods, except for no, I couldn't. I don't like being alone by myself. I shouldn't enter uninvited. Miss Bateman? Yes? Remember what I told you when we first met? You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barrow. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barrow. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Miss Walker. One cannot abandon reason. She's too stubborn about this. She needs to listen to what they're saying. Thomasina! Thomasina, come here this instant! I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. What is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... an accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly Daddy. Will he be alright? Of course. Of course he will be fine. Your father is as strong as an ox. But I need to go collect him, alright? Can't I come too? No, dear. Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside, alright? Yes, Mummy. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. So much walking backwards and forwards. Where did Mummy go? The resin has set somewhat. It's firmly gripped to the stump. That's cool, we've got a chisel. I've collected some waxy resin. Huh, that was an accidental find. I wonder if we could get the knife off with the resin. I helped him then. And I can help him again. Arthur, you won't believe it. The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to remember something. What is it? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. 
Let's talk about it tonight at the plow. Arthur, I must tell you about the dream I had. I was at Hobbs Barrow and there was a creature. It told me it saved my father from something inside and that I would find proof of this in the morning. Sure enough, when I awoke, the journal was in my room. Mildred confirmed the journal belonged to my father. The creature told me it could help my father again. I mean, it was merely a dream. I don't know what to think anymore. Arthur? Arthur, are you listening? Fine then, we'll talk later. I hope you piece together your memories. That's interesting. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll try the resin on the knife. Oh, hello dog. Hey boy. Okay, so he's gone now. That's good. I'm not seeing a dog anywhere. Hello, dear. Good day. Sydney, must you be so unruly? Run along home now, won't you? I believe we've met. Miss Thomasina Bateman, the famous antiquarian. My reputation precedes me. I can assure you it does. And you are? James. Was that your dog? Yes, his name is Sidney. Quite the excitable pup. Don't mind his bark. The little fellow wouldn't hurt a fly. I feel like this dude must be Lord Panswick. What do you know of Lord Panswick? A fine gentleman. Now that is someone who commands respect. Do you know him personally? No, I, I don't think anyone can really claim that. But what a tiring subject. Shall we discuss something a little more... exciting? What are you painting? A new world. Quite the ambition. Indeed. My ambition knows no bounds. Can I see it? Not yet. It's not finished. And such a world is not complete without you in it. You flatter me, James. Nonsense. Say you'll let me paint you. Why not? Magnificent. You shall be the shining star of my new world. I don't really have the time now, though. Perhaps later? Don't fret, my dear. When the time comes, I shall call on thee. Capital. That's a bit freaky. Do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I'd like to know more about you, Thomasina. What time do you like to rise in the morning? How do you like your tea? What makes you happy? Late, with three spoons of sugar, and spending time with my husband. You disappoint me. I sense no truth in your words. Are you a woman of dubious principles, Thomasina? You ask too many questions. Goodbye. See you soon, my dear. He creeps me out. I don't know if I should have asked him about the stone or anything. Okay, let's go talk to Mr. Bryden. If I, I'm pretty sure this is the way we need to go. Hello? Apparently we're chasing a woman. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Bateman? That's my name. 
Oh, marvelous. It's me, Leonard Shoulder. Heavens! I'd given up on finding you. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I would on me where to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvelous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear Miss Bateman, I had no idea. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colorful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I were a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously. Especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the Barrow. I didn't foresee anyone I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Hearn Wood were sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his home there. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrow, people say it did the trick. The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Uli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the blade. Except for you. I want to know what's there. 
Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Beckman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it. I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. Okay, I can't actually exit out of this conversation, but the issue is I'm running out of time. So I'm just going to have to end this video here and then pick up the rest of this conversation in video 8. I'm sorry for doing that, but this has just turned out to be a longer conversation than I was expecting. So thank you all for watching, whoever has been. As always, I greatly appreciate it. And on that note, I'll see you on the flip side. Bye!